Morning folks, well it's March, beginning of March, start of spring, we're out here in the rain but we're at Laguna Performance in Ashford, massive thank you to the folks down there. They are letting me play on this thing, the Ducati Multistrada 1260S. Hoo ha, let's have some fun. You can call me stupid Yes, you can call me sheep You can say I lay Well folks, here we go. Never ridden a Multistrada before, so I'm intrigued to see what this is like. Massive thanks, like I said, to Laguna Performance in Ashford for loaning me this bike. I have got the Cali Moto app. Massive thanks to Cali Moto, they've come on board as a sponsor. So we're gonna use that. Just generated a random ride. This is keyless, so you just push the button, wait for the start screen to go up. It's on touring at the moment, because I've never ridden it before. It's a bit damp and cold. Uh, and let's go. Oh ha! Yeah, it's liking that. How's my mirrors? Right hand one's fine, left hand one sort its life out. It's cool. Legs, indicators, all good. Beautiful. This is at a weird angle. As you can see there, that's that's at a weird angle that, but um, it'll have to do for just now, so you just have to tilt your head. Okay. Well, that's very smooth pull away. Very smooth. That feels a nice smooth engine. It's much smoother than I thought it was going to be. You've got to be honest. The gearbox feels really smooth as well. I was expecting it to be really quite clunky and agriculture agricultural. But literally in the opening minute it's anything but. Oh it's got a lovely overrun. I've got my earplugs in at the moment because with this helmet, this Rurok Atlas 2, I love the lid, but it's just loud, so I have to wear my plugs all the time. So I might be shouting at the moment, I do apologise. But even with my earplugs in, I can hear this thing, I can hear the overrun. It's got a nice popple, popple? A nice pop, cackle and fart. Proper Rice Krispies engine, it's lovely. That engine is silky smooth into the Nationals, beautiful. Oh, that quick shifter, nice. Not even under a lot of load there, we're just trundling along and second to third shift, beautiful. I really hope the audio is okay on this. I went out with Mr Fish last week and we did a cracking ride in the rain, but unfortunately the audio on my GoPro packed in. The, the little 3.5mm jack from the lavalier mic it only needs to come out of the audio adapter a millimetre, that's all and then you, you've lost your audio and it never used to be a problem but now it seems to be, I don't know why so oh, wow now bearing in mind this is just in touring mode at the moment this thing has got some punch um, yeah, so I have now used God, what have I used? I have used elastic thread as a temporary fix and I have secured, hopefully, the lavalier lead into the audio adapter. Here is hoping. I've got some Sugru coming. Ooh, the blipper's nice as well, third to second. Yeah, I've got some Sugru coming and I'm going to try Sugruing, which is like moldable glue. I'm going to try uh, Sugruing the lavalier mic to the audio adapter. So far, 
this feels lovely it's, it's effortless straight away you know sometimes you know sometimes you jump on a bike and uh, you're a little bit nervous to begin with you're not entirely sure how it's going to act what the controls are like I'm just not worried about this at the moment bear in mind this is in touring mode wow I might actually no let's give it a little bit longer in touring just to give it a fair shot the ride feels lovely just floats over all those bumps seating position wise you sort of feel a little bit more upright and thrown not thrown because you're not you're not like right over the front like this but you feel a little bit more aggressive it's a more aggressive seating position than the gs sportier sort of seating position i feel not, not have that see the cars coming there this route I'll, i'm plotting it on the cali moto app so what i'll do down in the description there'll be a link to this route and you can also if you want you can try out the Cali Moto app using my referral code if you want there is a free version if you want to upgrade to the premium I think it's $39.99 for the year I think obviously that's the one I've got the premium there's a lot more features available there but give the, the free one a go see what you think of it let me know if you've got any feedback things you don't like things you do like let me know in the comments in the vid and um, I'll do my best to forward them on to Cali anyway we're in the 30s I'll see you in a bit those brakes feel really good they're Brembo's Brembo calipers, Brembo discs this feels a really nice smooth ride as you can see these are some B road, back B roads not the greatest condition but bumpy, mucky yeah, blipper feels really good, very um, precise Okay, so let's push and hold the touring. Let's put it in sport. Right, so now we're in sport. Oh, oh yeah, straight away. Straight away it's got a bit of a kick. Oh yeah. Much more urgency about this. Oh it takes a little bit of getting used to actually. like it though oh yeah it's aggressive we're not exactly kin in it here but like i said these are backcountry b roads it's about five degrees lots of muck on the roads bumpy what other excuses can i get in mind you youtube gold <laughs> mind you the amount of crashes i've had i should literally have about eight million subscribers by now <laughs> If all you had to do was crash on camera. This is actually a really nice place to be on this bike. It's very comfortable. The seat feels firm, but not uncomfortably firm. Does that make sense? My knees feel, mm, I think, a little bit more bent than on the GS, but not massively. It's certainly not sports bike position. It definitely feels like one of those bikes where if you're going along in fourth, you kind of need to be in third it feels like it's the sort of bike that likes to or it reacts well to being pushed you know like come on let's go rather than let's just cruise along i'm sure you can certainly when i was in the touring mode it felt a very nice relaxed let's just cruise along here and you can cruise along at a good old lick but as soon as you whack it into sport it feels like the bike just wants to go you know, spank my arse, let's go <laughs> now, it's nice and easy to get my feet flat on the ground there it actually feels a little bit lower than the GS that, that's maybe why the, the foot pegs feel slightly higher is because, in actual fact, the seat is a little bit lower because I can easily get flat-footed flat -footed, flat -footed on this bike so if you're a little bit vertically challenged then maybe this is a good option over the the gs possibly for you although you know you can get lowering kits and all that for the gs's and super dukes and all that malarkey but give it a bash see what you think wow what a beautiful hole now somebody commented i put something up on instagram yesterday or day before to say i was going to be test riding this 
and I asked you, what questions do you have? And I had a little look this morning before I left the house and I'm sure someone was asking about a flat spot in the mid-range so let's go and have a look at that First to second quick shift, not bad at all Oh, I hope this audio is working a little bit of a drawback to a uh, full-time vlogger if you can't actually hear what waffle I'm talking That is lovely Now in sport mode it's quite firm suspension but it still keeps nice contact with the road you don't feel like you're being shaken all over the place go crazy you put it under some gas and the bike really feels like it hunches down it really does like to play now I've seen one of these in action with a bigger one the Enduro which is like the GS Adventure it's the adventure version of this much bigger one of the lads Gary he came away to the Pyrenees with me on one. Oh my god I mean Gary can ride with that thing she whiz it can hustle put it in the hands of someone that can ride oh mind you most bikes are the same but this thing was definitely peeing all over the triumph 1200 explorer that i was on gary nearly had his panniers down at one point uh, this is a nice place to be folks very comfortable feels sporty but at the same time nice and comfortable not making a fuss just get it done I'm impressed, I've got to say, I wasn't expecting the Multistrada to be as refined as this is. It's a big thumping V-twin engine and Ducati with its reputation, I was expecting, you know, almost like the doors to fall off if it had doors, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and everything just fall apart. This feels a really solid, crafted machine. I'm really impressed. Oops. I'm feeling quite a lot of wind turbulence around my head it might just be the lid, I don't know, or a combination of that blipper and quick shift is lovely, really smooth this is an effortless this is an effort, can I say that right? This is an effortless, effortlessly, this is a really fast bike and it doesn't make a fuss about it. I think this has 130 brake. I'll put it on the screen now. Torque, I can't remember, what's the torque? Oh, is it? Right. In fact, shall we go and have a brew? Let's have a cup of splosh in Rye. We're just coming up to Rye. So let's go and have a brew if the calf's open and we'll run through the spec. Oh, I do like that engine. Now, is the calf open? I think it is. Brew time. Oh, denied. Right, onwards. Whilst I'm here, somebody asked, what is the U-turn capability like? Well, we're in a car park. I've not done this since my bike course, so let's see. Full lock, right hand, U-turn. Let's see. That is no problem at all. Shall we try a figure of eight? Let's go there. Let's go right round. Yeah, no problem at all. That feels really stable. Really stable. Dare I say it, that actually felt smoother and easier than the GS. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that. This doesn't feel top heavy at all. Very similar to the GS in that the weight feels nice and low down. I'm really surprised to be honest folks I wasn't expecting this it's uh, it's a pretty nice place to be 
Looks pretty good too, doesn't it? Nationals. Oh yes. This thing is quick. Not feeling any flat spot, folks. A couple of people mentioned. Ooh, actually, yeah, right there. Coming down, like decelerating around about the 45 50 miles an hour mark maybe i was in too low a gear i went from fourth down to third and just easing off the throttle the bike didn't like it the engine is it's probably for a big v-twin actually it should have probably been in fourth for that we'll give it the benefit of the doubt at the moment that could be my fault that one nationals oh it wants to go it wants to go it's very very easy on this bike because the engine the engine's eager it's compelling you to go quick and it will be very easy to be hurtling along at not road legal speeds <laughs> yeah i know that's where the fun is but um, we need to be sensible about this there's options and things this is quite a major road it'll be lovely to just cane it through here but too many little wee options and villages and things Icklesham. Uh, this is a weird little thing, look, as soon as it's telling me to turn right here, then immediately left, and then come back onto this road, that's a, that's a little bug. Caliboto, you need to get that sorted if you wouldn't mind. Right, now we're in, I think this is Hastings, let's change the engine mode. You can do this on the fly, but obviously we're stationary at the moment. Let's put it in urban. So now I'm in urban city mode oh yeah straight away straight away it's much much more um, relaxed fuel delivery you actually you have to turn the throttle quite a bit before you feel anything from the engine to be honest with you the throttle response is dulled right down making it much smoother so same as before third gear 21 22 miles an hour engine feels quite labored into second feels a lot more manageable it's not as snatchy at all that definitely makes a difference i mean you're not going to use urban out and about are you but let's just try it anyway and see still a little bit snatchy it doesn't like to just dawdle along at these sorts of 20 mile an hour and less speeds in any gear but definitely whacking it in urban mode makes it much more manageable much more livable this is basically the Marbella, really, of the south coast, Hastings. A lot like Marbella, don't you think? It's actually, I shouldn't say that, Hastings is a lovely place to live. We've got some friends that live here and it's, it's actually a really, really nice place. Absolutely rammed in the summer and bank holidays. It is rammed. In fact, is Hastings where they do the bank holiday run, the May Day run? I think they do that from London to here. Thousands and thousands of bikers turn up. It's got a crazy golf place as well, and my missus absolutely loves crazy golf. Right, that'll do for now. See you in a bit. Oh, I'll tell you what, urban mode, it might help for, um, for really slow maneuvering in built up areas, but the second you get any sort of freedom, oh, it just feels meh, horrible absolutely nothing there so let's change back out of that put it back in touring i actually think touring's probably the most pleasant mode let's try it in touring for a while and just see you see this is why you should you should be allowed to have a bike for a test ride for a good few hours some of these places like laguna maidstone it's a sister company to laguna performance but laguna maidstone they were going to give me when i was looking for a bike after my first GS was written off. I was in the market and I was genuinely thinking, right, okay, we've got to try other things other than a GS. So I was active out there and I wanted to try one of these and I wanted to take out a, a Super Duke GT and the Super Adventure. And the Laguna Maidstone were gonna give me one for 15 minutes. And then when I said, come on, I need a bit longer than that, they said, all right, well, we'll give you one for half an hour. I mean, you cannot base uh, ultimately 18 and a half grand possibly even 20 grand purchase you cannot base that 
on 15 minutes or even half an hour out on the bike. Even an hour, you need a bit longer. I've been on this bike for just over an hour now, about an hour and 15 minutes or so I've been on the bike. And the first three quarters of an hour, an hour, I absolutely loved this and I thought, oh God, this ain't looking good. Jenny, I've got another year on, on the tick for the, um, the GS and I thought, oh, this could be a contender. But now I'm riding in a little bit of traffic. It's things like, you know, now I've been on it for a little while, I'm starting to feel a little bit of discomfort in my left knee. Again, didn't have that before. And I wouldn't know about it if I'd only ridden the bike for half an hour or so. What I will say is the acceleration on this thing. You think, well, oh, this is pretty quick. And then you're already going quick. There is a whole wall of power just waiting to be used. At the point when the GS is sort of taking a breath, you know, it's had that initial whap acceleration and the GS is going <gasps> like that. This thing just sort of goes, yeah, baby. And you saying bolts it straight by. There is a lot of power in this bike. Yeah, there you go. You can just feel it kick in. It's almost like a two-stage, around about the 5,000 revs, it just six, well, 6,000 revs really. There's just another bit of power that kicks in. The blipper and quick shifter is beautiful. Really nice, I like that. engine note is gorgeous now this thing has wheelie control believe it or not everything can be altered on this trash control abs it's got all the bells and whistles this heated grips three stage heated grips cruise control engine modes can all be altered on the fly just the usual thing you set your engine mode shut the throttle and that will engage whatever one you've selected Having ridden the new 1250GS down with Toro there and spent a wee bit of time on it now. Now all you people out there that call me the GS fanboy, you're going to hate me. But I'm still a GS fanboy. I, I love this. This is an animal. It's, it is insanely powerful. It's beautiful. It feels really nice to ride. It feels very well put together. Don't know what it would be like for prolonged ownership and prolonged abuse. But um, so far, there's absolutely no cause for concerns. There are things like the slow speed fueling. It's quite jittery. It's an engine that it wants to be ridden hard. It wants to be under power. It doesn't like to be labored. Nothing wrong with that, but um, for day-to-day -day riding, you know, if, if this was going to be your only bike that you'd use for everything, mm, for me, I, I would still go for a GS. To do the miles on, to tour, and to really have fun on, then, yeah, th this this would be a contender, absolutely. Is it comparable to the Super Duke GT or the Super Adventure S? Well, the power delivery is very much like the Super Adventure S to me. It's that animal just bop power, let's go. Uh, I would say the Super Adventure S felt like a, a bigger bike. This does not feel like a big bike to me. Seating position's quite low, low center of gravity. This doesn't feel flighty in the front at all, whereas the Super Adventure S definitely did. Although, good mate of mine, Matt, he has since bought the Super Adventure S changed it, changed the tyres and put road tyres onto it and he said that's totally transformed the bike and if you watch the Pyrenees series Matt is the guy on the KTM Super Adventure and you can see that thing well, that thing kicked ass and didn't take names this feels a bit more brutal than the KTM Super Duke GT to me believe it or not, I actually found the GT is powerful, no stretch it's not a slouch, don't get me wrong but the power delivery just felt a little bit more civilised. It didn't feel the animal that everyone told me. The Super Adventure felt like the animal to me. And this is like that. This, this is more of an animal. Insanely powerful. Oh, now 
professionals. Right, listen to this engine. Let's just get by all this crap. Right, listen to the engine. crap in the road here just have to watch what we're doing here oh this will get icy when it gets cold furnace lane now I did set this at the mega twisty roads I should have thought about that yeah, this is not gonna be fun mind you we've got to try it in all different environments don't we Whoa! Oh, blimey! That was slidey. Alright, I think I might set this to the less twisty setting and get us back onto some main roads. We do not want to be meeting something coming the other way! Coming the other way! <laughs> you don't want to be putting the front wheel onto that muck and hitting the brakes. Alright, let's just stop here this has got hill stop assist as well oh so you pull and hold the front brake just like the gs let's do pause planner all right see how it's on the super twisty bit whack it onto that one calculate gosh there we go all right so we're now in the red so to disengage the hill stop just push the front brake again oh and stall it <laughs> Now I've got the preload set on this to just rider. Very much like the GS, you can have it rider, rider in luggage, rider in pillion, rider pillion in luggage. So effectively this is the softest setting. Bear in mind this is just in touring, but when it's in sport, it's actually very, very firm. Normally on the GS I would put it on rider and luggage for me because I'm a, a fat lump but this just rider seems fine for me we need to get some fuel so it's a great little thing that Carly Moto has you come over here hit that and then I want a fuel stop I think it's this one 3.2 mile Golden Cross service station I'll have that Bosch integrator yes Bing, done. So now it should, hopefully, take us to a petrol station. Nationals! This thing would just sound immense with some sort of aftermarket can. Imagine this with an Austin racing can on it. Oh, it'd be like the devil coming through the woods. Muddles Green, Chuddingly. There's some weird names of places in this country, isn't there? What's the weirdest name place you've ever seen? Nationals! Yeah, the fuel in's not great there. Just holding a constant throttle coming along. The bike's going, uh, 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 like the old Tuono used to do. Turn right and a quick pit stop at the service station. There's a service station. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice one, Kali Moto. Let's fill up with fuel. Okay, so the light is on. Let's see how much it is to fill up. So we have to turn off and then you have 30 seconds to open the fuel cap, which is also keyless, which is awesome. Uh, diesel, diesel, all right, we want that. So let's put normal in. I'm not sure what the capacity of the tank is. I'd imagine on something like this, it must be 20 liter. I'll put it up on the screen now. What are you going for? How much do you think it's gonna be? That is it. To the rim. Whoa. 16.03 litres, 20 pounds, 20p. All you Americans will be having a heart attack at that. Let's put this into sport. 
sport mode. And off we go. Oh yes, that extra grunt in sport is just beautiful. Nationals. Oh my god. Put it in sport mode and it's it's like it's like you've taken the Tasmanian devil and then towel flicked it in the danglies. There's just power everywhere you turn the throttle. There's another bit of power. Bam, have more. Bam, have more. Not enough. Boom, have more. <laughs> oh my god, that'll get you into trouble. Okay, calm it down, smart. Ooh, usa. Remember how this all started? Behave. This throttle doesn't like it it's really snatchy if you're going along and you roll off it's like, ah, oh give me more power give me give me throttle so he's still looking he's waited at the junction one ahead right. it's just loads of power i mean even in fourth gear there was loads of oomph there I was second gear and the bike didn't like that. It needed, it wanted to be in first. So it's really quite a, a tall geared bike. Oh, did I miss a, I think I missed a waypoint and it's trying to send me back to do the waypoint. So again, you can skip waypoints on this. I think it's on this one and you, I think it's that one. Do you want to skip next waypoint? Yes, bosh. Calculating new route, pause. Okay, so that is now taking us back 58 miles. So that's trying to send us down there to come all the way back. No, I'm not doing that, I'm just gonna turn right. Let's crack on. I'll tell you what folks, you do not need any more power. Now this is something I've noticed, look. I've got the hill start on. I've got the hill hold, now watch. Blinking, blinking, blinking. And then it just lets go. Why does it do that? That's annoying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, gone. So seven seconds it starts warning you. Ten seconds it goes, yeah, we're just giving up. Why is that? I don't think the GS does that. The GS doesn't do that. Right, I just had to change some camera batteries. Right onto a major road now. The uh, 262, I have the battery pack in my pocket, charging up the phone. We've got the session running, the Hero 7 running. Push the button. Right, I have not got my earplugs in at the moment because I wanted to see what the bike actually sounds like so I'll probably be deaf by the time I get home that blipper and quick shifter is lovely it really is very smooth A262 to Ashford Nationals and incredibly agile and flickable it comes alive under power this bike it's one of those this thing needs to be ridden it's I mean it's okay just to sit on and trundle along it's fine it's it's a nice place to be it's comfortable we said this at the start didn't we the the engine doesn't like to just be left this thing needs to be ridden <laughs> this is an angry bike. <laughs> oh yes. These roads are in terrible nick. Well, this thing just soaking everything up. It is set in the sport setting, so 
it's quite a, a firm ride, but it's it's not jolting me out the saddle or anything. Look at these roads, man! Potholes everywhere. What exactly do we pay our rates for? God. Oh yes, upwards of six thousand revs. There is a real pull on this. I mean, it, it's cracking on below that, but at 6,000 revs, the devil comes. It's awesome. It really sort of kicks up a gear, shakes its head. Right, let's have you. Ah, we said, or I said, I would run through the specs, didn't I? I was aiming to, to stop a calf or something, and I never did. So, I'll chuck the specs up on the screen now. And that is you, fully educated on the Ducati Multistrada 1260S. Oh. <laughs> oh, this engine would just get you in a whole world of trouble. <laughs> You can feel the front just wanting to come up. Oh yeah, there it is, around about that five, six thousand revs. This thing is popping and farting and coughing. I love it. That's where the stock exhaust as well. Should have done a shaft, shouldn't I, and recorded the engine sound. Well folks, that's us nearly back. I've put it back into touring mode. Sport mode is an utter animal, but it's just a, it is a really, really snatchy throttle. Touring mode just eases all that out. So what do I think of the Ducati Multistrada 1260S? Well, oh, wow. This is one heck of a machine, folks. It really is. It has loads of power loads of power it's got loads of grunt it is comfortable as you can see it, it actually feels not overly massive at all riding positions fantastic really is nice and comfortable nice big wide bars there they don't they hardly need any input at all to turn the bike the mirrors are fantastic loads of vision out of them really really good stocks are nice and heavy nice and uh, rigid so you don't get much vibration there display is beautiful uh, all the info is just right there for you to see really on the display display you don't go, have to go hunting for it uh, buttons these are back lit as well something that didn't show up out there but they're back lit which is fantastic why don't bmw do that i don't get it but anyway yeah everything's nice and easy and logical to get to brakes feel really good really really good brembo calipers brembo discs engine as i said under power fantastic amazing it just wants more and more and more and this thing is quick slow speed um, slow speed it's not particularly comfortable so in towns and things like that even in first gears so the first gear is too it's too low a gear put it in second and then the engine starts protesting quite a bit it's that sort of 15 20 mile an hour mark it, it is just that's not where that engine needs to be it needs to be out under power and giving it some suspension on this brilliant beautiful we see some really gnarly roads that we fit today and um, this is lovely, it just soaked it all up. It does actually even have an enduro mode, so you can go off-road in this. Um, I'm not an off-roader, so I wasn't going to be doing that. But uh, all in, fantastic bike. It's round about 18 and a half grand, this bike. So it is a direct competition for the GS. Would I have one now? I've been out, done about what, 150, 200 miles there in the last sort of four or five hours. Would I have one of these over the GS? Possibly. Over the 1200? Possibly, because of the grunt in this engine. Over the 1250 GS, no, I wouldn't. Oh, this feels like it's got more power than the 1250 GS. Uh, the acceleration feels pretty damn impressive, but all in, the GS is just the more refined package. I would say this is the grown-up hooligan. The KTM Super Adventure S is the hooligan. This is the slightly grown-up hooligan. And the 1250 GS is the sort of mature gentleman out there that, that can still mix it with the young'uns. 
Massive thank you, huge thank you to Laguna Performance here in Ashford. Thank you very much for the loan of the bike. Folks, if you're in the area and you're looking for any sort of Ducatis, KTMs, Kawasaki's, get yourself along here. Laguna Performance in Ashford. All right, folks, if you've liked what you've seen, smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't, hit the thumbs down. Why the way, just leave me a comment down below, tell me what you think. Smash the subscribe button and ding dong that bell. If you haven't joined Patreon and you think it's your thing, check it out, patreon.com forward slash teapot1. A huge thank you to all of you who've joined the clan. Couldn't do this without you. All right, folks, look after yourselves. Remember, look after those you love. Get on out there and live your life. Ooh, ah.